Hello, as usual I'm growing in small 10 inch X cut flower water buckets here at homegrown veg in the United Kingdom. I've done that for a number of years and there's lots of videos on the channel to prove it. But this year I'm going to have a go with fibre bags. I'm still growing in the buckets but I'm growing in fibre bags as well and I thought why not conduct a trial? Why not see if one is better than the other for growing vegetables in? I've got the buckets, I've now got the bags, so I'm running a trial. I've started a trial. You may have seen my videos um, that I posted earlier this year when I started the trial off. Um, but with a few months in now, uh, some of these vegetables have, have kicked on, particularly over the last couple of weeks. Uh, not, not any sooner than that because We've had a poor start here in the United Kingdom. April was frosty and, and, and quite a bit of frost and cold. Uh, and, and so vegetables struggled at the beginning of spring. Uh, but now we're in early summer. Days are longer and warmer and, and things are kicking on. So we'll pop outside um, and we'll have a look at some of the vegetables that I've got in this growing trial. But it's worth remembering at this point some will look better than others, some will get across the finish line, some won't make it. They, they just won't make it for whatever reason. But we'll only be able to make a judgement as to which is best, buckets or bags, if we get a bucket and a bag over the finish line at the same time and we harvest those vegetables. And then we can have a look at them, can't we? We can look at the quantity, we can look at the quality. We can make a judgement. It's not a big trial. So anyway, that's what we're doing here at Homegrown Veg. Are you coming outside with me now? Come on, I've got these things uh, set up in a circle. Hey, if, if this camera falls over, I'll be falling over with it because I'll be dizzy trying to spin it round, trying to spin it round this circle. Come on, let's go. These are my carrots, 12 carrots in a bucket, 12 carrots in a bag. Seed sown using a template, a seed sowing template. I'm happy with the progress that these carrots are making. Let's have a look at the garlic. This is my garlic. Four cloves in a bucket, four cloves in a bag. It's pretty even, Stephen, at the moment with the garlic, just as it is with the carrots. And I'm happy with the way the garlic is progressing. Let's have a look at these red skin onions grown from sets. These are my red skin onions grown from sets. Five in a bucket, five in a bag. The ones in the bucket seem to be doing the best at the moment. But it's not what they look like now. It's what they look like when we go across the finish line. If we actually get across the finish line. Right, let's have a look at these Walla Walla grown from seed. This is a first for me. I've never grown Walla Walla before. I actually struggled uh, to get these seeds to germinate and grow, but they look as though they've kicked on now. So we've got four Walla Walla in a bucket and four Walla Walla in a bag. And I'm saying that they're just about even at the moment. Let's see how they go. Where are we at next? Oh, shallots. Let's have a look at these shallots. So we started off with four shallots in the bucket and four shallots in the bag. Three of the shallots in the bucket look iffy. 
I don't think they're going to make it. The one big shallot at the front, which it looks as though it's split off into about, let me just see if I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About thirteen, unlucky for some. Um, that shallot seems to have split off into about thirteen shallots. But the other shallots in the bucket don't look good at all. The shallots in the bag, there were four in there. One of those has bit the dust and two others look like they're not going to make it. The third one, which is the biggest one, uh, front and centre, it's only split off into about five shallots, so they should be big shallots if we get them across the finish line, but one of those has already gone to seed. Uh, one of those shallots is bolted. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too happy with these shallots at the moment. I'm not holding out a great deal of hope for the shallots. Right, let's, um, let's swing you around to the beetroot. Beetroot in a bucket on your right, beetroot in a bag on your left. There's seven in each. They look a bit hangdog at the moment. Um, I've been moving them in the greenhouse to get them away from the sparrows. The sparrows want to chew the leaves off them. And then I bring them back out and they look a bit hangdog because it's too warm for them. Uh, they have had plenty of water though. There are seven in each, seven in the bucket, seven in the bag. And some of them are about just smaller than golf balls at the moment. So they're not that big at the moment. Uh, fingers crossed, we'll get a good return from the bucket and the bag. And I think they're about even Stephen at the moment. The ones in the bucket might look taller, but that's because the bucket is slightly taller than the bag. But in any case, we've got nothing across the finish line yet. Right, that's it on the patio now. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look uh, in the greenhouse, we'll have a look at the tomatoes, we'll have a look at the cucumbers and then we'll pop back out and we'll go over to Courgette Corner. I'd like to show you the potatoes on this video um, but unfortunately the tops are so big that just actually moving them would, would probably damage them, would break the tops off the potatoes and I don't really want to do that. So we have got a which is best book of top bags grow potatoes uh, trial going on. I'm just not going to be including it in this video. Right, let's go to the greenhouse. This is Heinz 1350 in a bucket and this is Heinz 1350 in a bag and that's me tweaking the strings to make them move. Uh, they're about the same height. There isn't too much in it now. Uh, perhaps the bucket's slightly ahead and they've got uh, two Two trusses in the bag and three in the bucket. Okay, let's move up the line and have a look at Shirley. Okay, Shirley in the bucket. Shirley in the bag. Uh, they're about even Stevens as well. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't split those and they've got about two trusses I think formed, you might be able to see those. Right, let's go into the corner. Okay, what we've got here. This is Cerise, this is one of those small cherry type tomatoes. On your right, Cerise in a bucket. On your left, Cerise in the bag. And there's not much to divide those two either. Those two are looking the same. Right, let's do this corner and then we'll come back to those cucumbers. Where are we at here? Have we got them? I think we have, yep. Yeah. Okay, what have we got? This is... Oh, Big Daddy. I've never grown this tomato before. This is Big Daddy in the bag. Right in the corner, on your right. And this is Big Daddy uh, in the bucket, uh, bottom of the screen on your left. I think Big Daddy in the bucket's doing the best of these two. Uh, but I'm happy with the pair of them. The pair of them are growing uh, really well, there's nothing wrong with these tomatoes. What we're on to next? 
Crimson Crush. Crimson Crush. Allegedly the most blight resistant tomato. What do you think? Do you know, have you ever grown it? Do you think it is? I, I mean I don't think I've ever had blight so whether I've resisted it or not. Right this is Crimson Crush. So we've got Crimson Crush in the bag on your right. Crimson Crush in the bucket on your left. Um, not much to did between those two either. So those two are um, those two are still battling it out. And and the last one we're going to is Sun Gold. This comes with a great reputation. This tomato. I've never grown it before. I think it's a yellow tomato, a small tomato. Um, now then, Sun Gold in the bag on your right. I don't know if you can see I'm tweaking it. And in the bucket on your left. Now it has to be said this one in the bucket on the left is head and shoulders taller than the one on the right. But I'm not too sure that's a good thing because we've only got two trusses on it. And we're standing, we must be standing three and a half foot tall and this isn't a very big greenhouse. Um, but if I get four or five trusses before we pinch it out, some gold will have done okay for us. Okay, let's go up the other end, back up the other end and have a look at those two uh, cucumbers. Where we at there? That's them. Now I've got to tell you, a couple of weeks ago I wouldn't have given you tuppence for those two plants. They were anemic. They really were anemic. Um, but they've kicked on. They've got a bit more colour in the leaf now and I'm much, much more happy with them than I was two weeks ago. And let me show you this. How about that? Our first cucumber. Look at that. Now I don't think they get much bigger than this, that'll be about 4 inches. Um, so it won't be too long before we're taking that one off and that'll be our first cucumber. Now you can see the white yoghurt cartons standing by the bucket and the bag. This is in the bag incidentally. Um, what I'll do is, when I take that cucumber off, I'll put a pebble in the yoghurt pot and I'll keep doing that until the end of the season. And if we get 10 pebbles, we've had 10 cucumbers off this plant. And if I get 12 pebbles in the other one, we've had 12 cucumbers off this plant. And we'll be able to make a, a judgment as to which is best, buckets or bags. This one incidentally has, has, has divided off into two. Now I was tempted to pinch one out, uh, but I've decided I'm going to leave it. I'll, I'll support the pair of them, it'll grow on. Uh, two runners and this at the moment is just growing on a single uh, runner but I'm going to let them go as they are okay that's the cucumbers just the courgettes to do let's go to courgette corner well it's only a couple of days ago I popped a video up where I was complaining that none of the male flowers had opened. I had lots of male flowers, none of them opened, and I had courgettes. And I, I tried to get a handle on how they were getting pollinated, and you've, you've sent me some really good feedback. I mean, there's a number of ways it could have happened. Um, but yes, yeah, so the one on the left is the one in the bucket, the one on the right is the one in the bag. The one on the left has about four or five courgettes on it, and one of them is nearly ready to be taken. So the one on the left is definitely in front in terms of producing courgettes. It's got about five courgettes on it I think and one of them's nearly ready uh, and that's the one in the bucket. The one in the bag has a couple of courgettes on it, they're very small but it, it's got courgettes. Um, and so yeah I'm, I'm happy with the way these, with, with the way these two courgettes are going. See that I've got a couple of yogurt cartons ready. 
we take a courgette, we put a pebble in, we take a courgette, we put a pebble in, we do a count up at the end of the growing season and we make a judgement. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it won't be long, we're starting to harvest stuff here at homegrown veg. These courgettes are, are kicking on really nicely now, and the cucumbers are. Uh, and I've got potatoes nearly ready as well. We're already eating uh, lettuce and we're taking some kale out of the raised bed. So we, it's starting to get productive here at homegrown veg in the United Kingdom. So I hope you're having a good uh, gardening year, wherever you're gardening, stay safe. Uh, plant stuff. It's the future, isn't it? You're planting the future. This is Homegrown Veg, signing out.